Hey friends, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. I'm Madonna and on this channel we talk about all things stories and self-care. So that's books that we love, books that we want to read, authors that we love, and of course, self-care. If you're new here and you're interested in that sort of content, definitely subscribe down below and also hit the notification bell so that you're notified of every single time that I upload. And if you're not new, you're returning, welcome back friend, it's so good to see you again. So today I am really excited to share with you all of the books that I read in the month of January. Last year I didn't do a lot of uh, monthly recaps because I didn't think that I read enough but with my new goal this year of reading 52 books that it comes to about a book a week so I'm excited to say that I have more content to share and so I'm really excited to do a wrap-up to talk about all of the books that I read this month so I've recently come across this app called Storygraph and it is really helpful it is very similar to Goodreads in that you can track all of the books that you read you can set reading goals you can set reading challenges um, and it gives you a little bit more information about the details of your reading habits. For instance, as you record all of your all of the books that you're reading, it will note down um, different key things. And it's really helpful for you to understand like what genres am I typically going towards? How big of a book do I typically read? Um, what are the, the moods or the pacing of that book? So I love this app and um, it's very useful for me to be able to understand like the stats, I guess. And so I'm going to go ahead and share those stats for with you for the books that I read in January. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at the app and and, um, just making sure that I'm capturing everything correctly. So for the month of January, I actually read four books. These were Legend Born by Tracy Dion, Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler, Stay With Me by Ayobami Adebayo, and Imago, which is the third in the Xenogenesis series by Octavia Butler. So of those four books, those were totaling 113 pages and the moods were very, were really varied across those four books. So they were adventurous, emotional, reflective, sad, dark, mysterious. And if you know anything about those books, if you've read any of the books, you really know that they are very just weird and um, interesting. So definitely a lot of, um, I'm seeing the sad. I definitely remember that it was reflective and dark. So that is really spot on. In terms of pacing, I it was a 50-50 split. I had some books that were of more of a medium pacing and then some were slower. So I would say that uh, Earthsea or part, Parable of the Sower was definitely on the slower side. Imago was also, to me, a little bit on the slower side. So I think that's pretty spot on. In terms of page number, I read two books that were less than 200 pages, which is pretty interesting. I typically go for books that are a little bit longer. One book that was 500 plus pages, and then one book that was in the middle, 300 to 499 pages. Of course, no surprise, all four of these books were fiction books, and I know that I set a goal to read more nonfiction, but January was not the month in which that happened, so those were all fiction books for me. And then in terms of genre, I love fantasy, I love speculative fiction, and I would say a good portion of these books except for one were all in the fantasy genre two of them were more speculative fiction definitely dystopian when you have imago and um, you think about imago and you think about uh, parable of the sower young adults science fiction historical so overwhelmingly uh, fantasy for sure with two books I read these both in the or I read all of them in the print version so I had an actual physical copy of the book I didn't buy any of these books I got them all from my library so um, yay for me using that library card and then in terms of rating the ratings were an average about 3.83 and um, two of the books I rated 3.75 and Unless I'm missing a, a rating, but one of the books I rated four. I enjoyed all of the books that I read, and I'm gonna go ahead and now talk about a quick su summary or synopsis of all of the books. So coming out the gate, I have Legend Born by Tracy Dion, and this is a young adult fantasy book. It is very much, when you think about fantasy, has that element of magic, that element of magical realism. It's a book where 
it was very sad. There were a lot of sad elements, but it was a very, you left the book feeling very hopeful. In this story, it's really interesting. Our protagonist is Brie Matthews, and she's a young black woman who is reeling from the death of her mother. She's 16 years old, and she applies for this early start program where she can go to the University of, I believe it's the University of North Carolina, uh, Chapel Hill, I think. And she, because her, her mom was an alumni, she can um, be a part of that legacy. Short Shortly after she gets admitted to this program, her mother ends up dying and she is really stunned and is grappling with this death. So she has to figure out if she's going to continue with the program with her best friend or if she's gonna drop out. She decides even though she doesn't wanna leave her father by himself and this school is a, a couple hours away from her father, she decides to go ahead and go for it because she wants to understand more about her mother and the past that her mother had. And so she decides to go and literally like on her first weekend, she starts to see like really crazy strange things like demons on campus, there's like magic and, and she can see the magic in the air and she's like, what what is going on? So it turns out that there is a secret society that's actually on this campus and she ends up seeing some parallels with this secret society and with how her mother passed away. So she thinks that there's some sort of connection between the two. So she decides to join the secret society or secret order to learn more about her mother's death and, and see if she can get to the bottom of it. And we find her ultimately falling in love and kind of solving the mystery of what happened to her mother. So it is a poignant story about how a young woman is dealing with grief and then also dealing with sometimes being the other. She in the secret order is the only black woman or the only black person in this um that's in this, you know, incoming class of this order. And she see, she has a lot of uncomfortable interactions, uncomfortable conversations that are had, and ends up ultimately seeing how her past and her mother's past and her grandmother's past and her great grandmother's past and all the way up the generation brought her to where she is now. And it's a very interesting twist at the end of was she supposed to you know ultimately be in the position that she's in so without spoiling it that's all i'll say but i thought it was a very interesting look again at grief and how we understand and work through really the, the passing of someone and also understanding the histories that are maternal sides of our families how they're linked and how they shape and form who we are as people and as individuals so really enjoyed this book a really nice light read even though it's talking about grief and it's a really heavy subject it was a great read and i would highly recommend it for those of you that are interested in maybe a uh, interesting take on a fantasy novel. The second book that I read this month is Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler and Octavia Butler is no surprise you guys know I love her work and I love her writing and this one was definitely interesting when um, I think you know dystopian was one of the moods in which one of the books that I've read you know encapsulated and this is definitely that it was so dystopian so out of this world and really quite uncomfortable to be honest it, it put me in a in a uh, a weird frame of mind I'll say but it was great to read and I, I really needed to experience it so what this book is about is a young woman named uh Lauren Oli o Olimina I think her last name is Lauren and she is again a young girl who is coming into the world and understanding the world around her this book is set in 2025 which is really strange because I believe it was written in either 1990 or 19 like the early 90s and so I guess back then 2025 was like so far off but it's like <laughs> actually only three years from now so it was really interesting in that the the author wrote this as you know a future thing but like reading and experiencing it not so far off from that future is kind of mind-boggling either way it was set in a future time 2025 where the world has dissolved into chaos and there are a lot of massive climate events that have really shaped the world. So there's a lot of poverty, there's a lot of breaking down of humanity's orders and systems and processes. And so there are, you know, this idea that there's like a have and a have not. And there are very small communities of people that are in between. So you're either super rich or you're really, you know, beggar street poor. Lauren is the daughter of a Baptist preacher who is the kind of the overseer of this community, this small community. He has a very set, you know, way in which he does things. Like he wants to make sure that his community is um, is able to feed themselves, able to defend themselves. But he believes that they should not go beyond the community walls. Outside of the community walls, there are, like I said, you know, 
people that are street poor, that are, you know, beggars, that are some people that have, you know, really taken a lot of drugs and they're just not in, you know, a good place of mind. And it's really tough. It's it's one of those places where it's, again, humanity is, is basically dissolved. And it's uh, unfortunately intense acts of violence against women, against uh, interracial uh, couples. Just really, truly just think of the worst of the worst It's is what is happening outside of, um, you know, people's walled communities. And unfortunately, Laura, Lauren is realizing that these walls of this neighborhood or of this community is not going to stand forever. We have to figure out a way to go to another place and develop a new self-sustaining community. One that people can create their own food, be able to fight and defend themselves, and just be able to understand the world in which they are in and also ultimately develop another place, whether it's Mars, whether it's some other place to to settle one. Lauren is very headstrong and she ends up after losing her family she ends up actually going and taking on this journey to find this community and build this community and along the way she has these writings and musings and almost like poetry that she writes that documents her her thoughts and feelings and it's almost like sort of works as like her manifesto for how she believes that humanity should move itself forward. And she calls that Earthseed. And Earthseed is a new philosophy in which a lot of times in her in her mind a lot of times um, things happen to you and it's god sh she believes it's god shaping you it's god molding you into being a better version of yourself and she believes that while god is shaping you you also shape god and so if something happens to you you take that and not just say oh well woe is me and you know this is a terrible situation you make the best of it and it's a really interesting philosophy and uh, it was really interesting to read so definitely a interesting twist at the end she finds she ends up along the way on her journey building her community as she's going before she even gets to her final destination so it was really quite quite interesting to see the different cast of characters that come along and how they grapple with this idea of Earthseed and how they eventually you know come to terms with it and and agree with her so I think that it's a very interesting read I will say just trigger warning there are topics of um, extreme <laughs> discomfort there were there were times where I was like this is a bit much but things like you know rape there are things you know in intense violence substance abuse there is a lot of child abuse so quite uh, quite uncomfortable but it, it definitely makes you think and so if you're looking for a book that kind of challenges the norms and challenges common ways of thinking I guess I would definitely knowing the trigger warnings and knowing uh, the things that just kind of keep keep in mind um, I would definitely recommend reading Reading this book. I think it's a very interesting read for sure and um, and I, I quite enjoyed it. It took me a while to get through but I, I quite enjoyed it and I would recommend it. The third book that I read this month was Stay With Me by Ayobami Adebayo. This was a beautiful 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 book about a young couple who named y Yajide and Aiken who meet each other I believe in university and just fall in love and are just taken with one another. It talks about how Yajide and Aiken are dealing with the pressures of unfortunately sometimes how African or specifically Nigerian parents and their expectations. So they meet in college and in Nigeria uh, just as a side note, in Nigeria, um, there in the past, I don't know how prevalent it is still today, but in the past, it was very common for men to take multiple wives across across cultures, not just in this Yoruba culture, but in Igbo culture where um, my family is from, also also cultures. Like it, it was very common for a man to have, if he could afford it, to have multiple wives. And so Yajide grew up with a father who had multiple wives, and she unfortunately her mother passed away in childbirth so she her 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 father had a wife and then married Yajide's mom and then um, had two additional wives even though there were multiple women in her life she almost sort of grew up as an orphan she didn't really have the love and comfort of a woman um, even though or of a mother even though her father had multiple wives and that could 
potentially provide that. So Yujide has come to a point where she's a young woman and she's like, you know what? This whole polygamy thing where you have multiple wives, that's not for me. And I, I want no parts. And when she meets Aiken, she tells him that. And Aiken is so taken with her that he's like, you know what? I, I'm on board. I don't I don't want to have multiple wives. So everything's all good and dandy. They end up getting married. And then of course, as Nigerian parents tend to do, it's like, oh, you're married now. Where are my grandchildren? And unfortunately, um, Yejide and Aiken are not able to get pregnant. It becomes a sore spot within the family, so much so that she falls out of favor with the family and Aiken's mom ends up forcing Aiken to take a second wife, and which he does not want to do, but he ends up being pressured to do that, so that's what he does. Of course, this causes a rife between Yejide and Aiken, and she's not happy about this. It's just a really interesting look at how Nigerian parents sometimes have an expectation that they want their children to be the best that they can be, but then they put these different expectations or, or, or standards in which they force their children to abide by, but it ends up sometimes f making their child, putting their child in a worse position than they would have. So Aiken is, is then so desperate, he devises a plan to be able to get Yijide pregnant, and she does, and unfortunately through that, that that really does destroy Aiken's relationship with the rest of his family and also with Yijide. And it really truly is a, a really sad tale, but it was very interesting to understand that story of polygamy and understand that story of just how Nigerian cultures and pressures and standards and the ways in which things were done in the past cause issues in the future sometimes. So if you're interested in a story that is a little sad, I'm not gonna lie, it is a bit sad, but it has a nice ending. Um, I would recommend this. I, I don't know how to tell the story without like ruining it or without spoiling it, but I really enjoyed it and um, I would highly recommend it if you're looking for a book to read. And then the last book that I read in January is Imago by Octavia Butler. Again, I love Octavia Butler and I really love this, this series, the Geno, Xenogenesis series. I will say though, I was a little disappointed in this third book. I, I didn't love it as much as I loved the first two, but it was, it was still a good read and I was still able to, I was glad I was able to finish out this series. So what this book is about, it's about a young man, I believe his name is Jodas, and he is another child of Lilith. So we have in the first book, we have Lilith where she comes across these um, Onkali aliens or species and they are a really, um, curious species that they love finding other species, humans in this case, to be able to mate with and create a whole new species. The first book, she has that whole experience and she, first she fights it, then she comes to terms with, this is the way the world is. Then we have a second book where I believe that character, the main character's name is Aiken as well, where he is essentially the byproduct of the Lilith and the Onkali aliens coming together and creating another, another species. Um, he looks very human-like and he's considered a construct and so he has the abilities of the Onkali in that they're able to, he's able to very quickly take in information and understand it and, and store it forever. And then also he has his human side where he's able to have reason and feeling and emotion. And so he's, it's a blunt, he's a beautiful blend of both human and Onkali. Then we have Imago, which is a, another child of Lilith who is the sexless version of the Onkali. So he's again both human and Onkali but yet he's a sexless version of that the construct of that. So if you don't know about this series it's it's kind of confusing and I'm not going to get too much in detail but this is essentially following Jodas who is that um, sexless sexless construct of the humans and the Onkali and he is on a journey to find his own mates and and to live his own um, his own life. So it was a interesting wrap up i wouldn't say that i would just read this as a standalone but if you have read the genos genogenesis series and you're wondering whether or not you should read it i would say definitely consider reading it it definitely puts a lot of things to bed and there really is no no you know future that could could happen i guess um or I guess there is a future that can happen, but of course, of course, Octavia Butler did not write any additional books on this on this particular series. But it's a nice ending, and it, it definitely helped me to put it to bed and um, to kind of just like write, you know, can complete that chapter. So I I somewhat enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite, but you know, it was it was a good. It was nice to be able to wrap up that series and um, 
and kind of put that to bed. All right, so that is it. Those are all of the books that I read this month. Have you read any of these books or have you considered reading any of these, any of these books? Definitely leave me a comment down below letting me know either which book you have read or which book you're looking to read. Also, let me know what books you read in January. I am keeping a running TBR list. So as I'm looking for more books to read in February and beyond, I'm sure others are as well. So go ahead and definitely uh, list down some of the books that you read in February. I'm really curious to see what you guys have been reading. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. By doing so, it definitely helps to put this video and this channel in front of more viewers like yourself that are looking for Black, Indigenous, persons of color, uh, women, authors, and uh, stories about those communities. So definitely giving this video a thumbs up definitely helps to put this channel in front of more people like yourself. And I would be so grateful if you did. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed but you like what you see, definitely subscribe down below and also hit the notification bell so that you're notified of every single time that I upload. All right, so that is it from me. I will see you in my next one. Bye.